Yo, what's up guys? My name is Alex. Um, I graduated from Stanford in math, computer science. I worked on Wall Street, but I just like to beat sports books basically. And what we're gonna talk about in this video is how to beat sports books. And these are the main types of markets that you can bet. So we're gonna talk about what are the pros and cons to betting these different types of markets? Where's the most opportunity? Where can you make the most money? So the first one is just main markets, right? If you think of sports betting, you think of money line, point spread for an NBA game, and the amount of total points in the game. That's main line markets. Maybe you can include first half money line, first quarter money line, first quarter total points in a college football game. But basically, main line markets are kind of the main ones that you think about. So alternate markets are kind of a newish invention. They're very popular on US um, regulated sports books. Essentially, like if the main line is over eight runs in a baseball game, minus 110 over, minus 110 under, standard VIG, laying $11 to win $10, sports books will also offer maybe over seven runs, over six runs, over five runs. So maybe over five runs is minus 400 odds, over six runs is minus 300 odds, over seven runs, right? Like you get the point is sports books offer a variety of different betting options for people to, to wager on. So those are alternate markets. Um, same thing for point spread, right? If the bucks are minus 4.5 against the Suns, they'll also maybe give you bucks minus 10.5 plus 210 odds. So there are opportunities and alts. Then we have player props, pretty intuitive. You know, first person to score a touchdown, LeBron James total points, all those things. Game props, game props are kind of interesting, right? First team to score in NFL, last team to score. You get some interesting psychology there, like, you know, like, okay, is this coach gonna, if he wins the flip, you know, the coin flip, is he gonna kick off? Is he gonna opt to receive? So there's a lot of interesting dynamics in game props as well, because you can think about it, if one coach is always gonna kick, one is always going to receive in the first half, then one team is guaranteed going to start with the ball, right? So like, they'll be more likely to score first. So game props, another interesting thing. Then we have futures, futures player awards, right? Who's gonna win NFL Rookie of the Year? Um, who's gonna win the NFL Super Bowl? Who's gonna win the conferences? Those are futures, you can bet on all this stuff. Futures are usually a long time away, right? So you're tying up capital for a long amount of time, but there can be some great value in futures. And then finally is like these boosts and promos that a ton of books, offshore sports books, US sports books, Canadian sports books, Australian sports books, all these sports books kind of offer to keep users engaged and coming back to their products. Um, we've discussed this, all sports books are commodity businesses. They're all the exact same thing basically. They take betters money, that is their goal. They accept wagers and then they give you a payout if your wager wins. These are all commodity businesses, so they are ruthlessly marketing against each other. And for that reason, you know, they offer these boosts and promos, deposit bonuses to try to get you to come back. So what are the pros and cons? Mainline markets. Mainline markets, usually, you're, you're gonna have the highest limits, right? You're gonna have the highest limits, and they're also going to fly under the radar a lot more. It's very normal to bet NBA money lines, right? Like, that's a very standard, extremely popular bet. So for example, I am max limited on FanDuel. They barely let me bet anything, but I can still somehow get down $600 on MLB totals a lot of the time. So mainline markets are best because, um, first of all, if you're new to sports betting, they're the three easiest to understand, but also they just allow the biggest betting size, right? So even if you get limited, buy a sports book because you're making too much money, your highest limits will be on mainline markets, okay? So mainline markets allow the highest betting size. That's the main pro of them. Now, alternate markets, the great thing about alternate markets is there's just a ton of data, right? If you think about it, every MLB game just has one, you know, run line. You know, Dodgers minus 1.5 plus 105 odds. Reds plus 1.5 minus 125. Whereas for alternates, you have tons more options, right? And that was the whole idea behind creating Odds Jam is just like, 
there's so much data on these sports books, it's impossible to look through and find good bets manually. You need software to do it for you. You need software to show you where the line discrepancies exist. So alternate markets, there's a lot of opportunity. Your limits will probably be lower. Um, you won't be able to bet as much money on them long term, but there's just more markets, more data, more opportunity. Um, so alternate markets. Player props. Player props have the biggest line movements typically. So the most opportunity, the highest profit margins come in player props, but your limits will be the lowest. Sportsbooks will typically allow you to bet the least amount of money, right? And that's something very important to consider. And you can think about it, it makes a lot of sense. If there's some NBA game, right? The Celtics are playing the Rockets. If the Rockets center gets injured, then the Celtics center maybe is expected to get a lot more rebounds. So all these lines have to move for player props and things like that as well. And there can be huge line discrepancies, right? If a guy is expected to play half the game, but then the star player gets injured and he's expected to play three-fourths of the game, you may see his total points move from over 18, minus 110, to over 25, minus 110, in a matter of a few minutes. And if you're able to capitalize on those line discrepancies in big betting opportunities, especially after news comes out, as news enters the sports betting ecosystem, you are going to be able to make some big money in player props. Um, game props, again, are pretty interesting. There's not gonna be as much opportunity as player props and your limits will be lower, but a lot of people like them because they're quick, right? Will there be a run scored in the first inning of an MLB game? That's pretty easy to watch, kind of, you know, you kind of just watch it, the game's over quick, you figure it out. Who's the first team to score in an NBA game? That's something, you know, where there can be a little bit of opportunity, there's some opportunity, but probably not as much as player props. Futures, so, I guess we'll talk about boosts and promos first, and we'll dive into a screen share to kind of run through an example of everything we're discussing here. But boosts and promos, they're great, but typically they only let you bet like $10, $25, $50, sometimes $100. So it's not like you're able to bet a ton of money on them, but there's, you know, high EV on these ones, high expected value, high expected profit on boosts and promos, right? What's better than a deposit bonus where you deposit a thousand dollars and you get $250 for free just for depositing money into one of these regulated sports books or offshore sports books, right? Like they're great, but you're kind of capped in terms of how much you can earn from them. And um, so, you know, there we just won't talk about them too much. Now, Futures and awards, again, you're tying up capital for a long amount of time, right? Like if I'm betting on who's gonna win the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl's like six months away right now. So why would I do that? It's tying up capital for a long time when in MLB every day I can earn a three, four, five percent expected profit in return on my capital. Why would I bet on something six months away and tie up capital for six months to get like, you know, some return? So some people don't like to bet on futures and awards. And another thing I will say is it's important to think about futures because most of these markets are only one-way markets, right? If you think about totals in an MLB game, they're two-way markets, over 8.5 runs, minus 110, under 8.5 runs, minus 110. You can bet both sides so you have a pretty good indication of what you think that sportsbook thinks you know, over 8.5 runs should be. So if it's minus 110 odds on both sides, you can watch the previous videos about no vague odds. The sportsbook probably thinks that over 8.5 is roughly 50% to hit, under 8.5 is roughly 50% to hit, right? One of these bets has to hit. The game has to have under 8.5 or over 8.5 runs. They're giving you the same odds on both, minus 110. So both are equally likely to hit 50% a coin flip no vague odds would be, you know, plus 100. That would be the fair odds, right? If the sports book didn't charge vague or house edge. What's interesting with futures is these are typically one-way markets, right? DraftKings gives you, and we'll go through some examples, um, you know, they'll give you Chiefs to win the Super Bowl plus 600, but they don't have Chiefs to not win the Super Bowl minus 1,000. Most sports books don't give you the option to bet the other side of the future. Now, if that's not clear, we'll go through a few examples. But again, most markets in sports betting are two-way. 
right? You bet on something and you can bet on the equal and opposite outcome. I can bet on the Padres to score first tonight or the Phillies to score first tonight. So the book can't absolutely rip me off, right? Because if the book's ripping me off in one direction, I can just bet the other side. With futures, they're only giving you one-way markets typically, right? Saints to win the Super Bowl, Bucks to win the Super Bowl. There's no Bucks to not win the Super Bowl, which means the sports book can just like have the worst possible prices on, on their odds, and you don't even notice how badly you are getting ripped off, okay? So this is really important to think about. Um, and you can think about it intuitively as well. Like, let's say I come to you and I'm like, I'll buy your car for $10,000. Like, I may think your car is worth $50,000 or $15,000 or $20,000, right? I'm only giving you the price that I'm willing to buy something from you. I'm not telling you the price I'm willing to sell your car, right? Whereas if me and you had the exact same car, this is a terrible example, but if me and you had the exact same car and I came up to you and said, hey, you know, I'll buy your car for $10,000 or I'll sell you mine for 12,000, then you have a pretty good sense that, okay, this guy thinks, you know, this particular car that we both have is somewhere in the middle of 10,000 and 12,000. He probably thinks it's like 11,000 bucks. Um, so again, two-way markets are a little more clear and you can't get ripped off as much as futures markets. So that's something we'll talk about. And again, we'll show a few examples because I do feel like that was very confusing. But again, with when they're only offering you one-way markets and they don't have to show you what they'd offer you on the other side, they can just drag down those one-way prices. So oftentimes the worst odds where the sports books are taking the highest VIG, the highest house edge, are coming in futures markets and awards markets. This is where they make a lot of money off sports bettors because sports bettors don't realize how bad the prices are that they're getting. So let's dive in to take a look at DraftKings and kind of check out these different sections. Yo, what's up guys? So we talked a little bit about the different types of markets and what you can see is in terms of arbitrage and positive expected value betting, so just value lines, like here we see, you know, under 2.5 goals in the soccer game, Liverpool is plus 170 on, um, on Twin Spires and Unibet Sportsbook, and it's only plus 139 on Pinnacle, and it's similar on Bookmaker, the two sharpest sportsbooks in the world. Maybe you want to place that bet. And if we go to arbitrage, you can see the same thing. There's opportunities in home run bets. There are opportunities in money lines, opportunities in first three innings run lines, tons of random things. Um, so we can switch over to DraftKings really quickly. And um, as I've kind of said before, good lines don't last forever. If a starting pitcher is scratched and the odds drastically move in a game, you're not gonna have forever to capitalize on that opportunity. So knowing how to navigate these books quickly and find good markets is important. So these are the mainline markets, right? We can see for the Braves-Dodgers game tonight, we have the run lines, we have the total runs, and then we have the money line market. So the Braves are plus 180 odds to win the game. Their run line is plus 1.5, minus 115. Here are the alternate markets in DraftKings as an example, right? Alternate run line, alternate total runs. And you can see for total runs, there's just so much more data. There's so many more markets because bookmakers, they want more volume on their books. They want to make money off of bettors who want to play specific bets. So they offer a ton of bets, right? Um, so you can see alternates have a lot of opportunity. And this is just for total runs in tonight's games. And a lot of these games have started anyway. So, And then player props is just a tab click away. You can see all the player props that are offered. Home runs, right? Pitcher to record a win, strikeouts, all sorts of things you can bet on that you'll find on Odds Jam. And again, knowing how to navigate these books quickly is pretty important. So, like right here, I'll try to find an example. We can see that under 9.5 rounds in this Anthony Joshua fight is plus 115 odds. So, you should know how to like quickly go to boxing, boxing, right? Like, Anthony Joshua, if you wanted to place this bet or if you believe there was value there, you go here, then you go to total rounds, under 9.5 plus 115, right? Exactly what Odd Jam says. you got to be quick to get in on the best bets. Um, 
So, player props, we were kind of going over. So, player props, we have player props, we have innings props, we have series props even for MLB. Most series are right, three games. Who's going to win the series? Um, game props, to score first and win, team total runs, total hits, race to a certain amount of runs, both teams to score. All sorts of game props are offered on these books. It's literally insane how much data... Um, these new mobile sports books in the U.S. regulated market are offering. And then team futures. So we talked a little bit about futures. Futures, you have to be especially careful because books can really drag down the odds that they're giving you um, because you can't really calculate the vague, right? They're not telling you a two-way market where they think a team should be bought and a team should be sold. If there's no two-way market, Sportsbooks tend to have higher VIG, higher house edge, and really drag down the odds they're giving you. So here we can see for team futures, they offer a ton of things which are very popular to bet on, right? Who's going to win the World Series? Who's going to win this division? Who's going to make the playoffs? Who's not going to make the playoffs? And you can kind of click around, see all of that, and then you have player awards here. So knowing how to navigate these books quickly for every sport, um, it'll benefit you a lot because you'll be able to get to good value betting opportunities, positive expected value betting opportunities, and arbitrage opportunities. Um, and that's a little bit about the different types of markets op offered on U.S. sportsbooks. And for most sites, it's pretty similar. And again, if you have any questions about anything, you can feel free to reach out. If you like this content, please like, please share, please subscribe. It's good feedback for us that this content is actually valuable to other people. Um, so thank you again for your